Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a brand new season, season 7 here. We are going to call it Delta News. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. If you've been keeping up to date with the channel, I do apologize for a little bit of a delay in this season coming out. Just been swamped getting things back together, coming back from vacation, but I am very excited to bring this to you, uh, or at least this new season to you, and just get back into the groove here that we had before I went on vacation. So as you can imagine from the thumbnail, this is going to be an application that makes use of Firebase's real-time database, and we're going to center it around Delta News. Now this does refer to the Delta variant going around in this world right now, uh, and I don't want to turn this into a political series or anything along those lines. Uh, I am vaccinated, go ahead and do your part, and I will leave it there. Uh, merely just going to go ahead and use that as an example uh, because it does affect us, everyone in the world right now, and we might as well have some content that we all can relate to. So basically it's going to be this application that using Firebase's real-time database, we are going to uh, surface basically what would be a news feed in this application uh, of articles that the user can click on, kind of a listed detail view powered by Firebase. Off camera, all that I've done is created a Firebase project, created a brand new project in Android Studio here. You can see there's literally nothing inside our main activity. Um, all of this code will be in GitHub and any of these uh, helpful links, tutorials, or documentation will also be linked in the description. If you've missed any of this stuff before and have no idea what uh, or how I've gotten this far, please go ahead and check out the last season. We covered a whole lot in the Rick and Morty season. Thank you guys so much for the support. Um, and then you'll be caught up to speed here, but nothing new. We have a Firebase project up and running. We have our Google services.json file uh, somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, here it is. So this app is ready to go. And uh, as you can see here, we're basically in the hello world. Uh, I've just gone ahead and updated some colors inside of the application to kind of match the theme here from the thumbnail. But outside of that, let's jump right into things here. So the real-time database. Right now, it doesn't really look like too much. Uh, there's absolutely nothing here. But essentially, you can kind of think about this as somewhat of a JSON file. At least it has a similar structure to that. You can actually export and import uh, the database to or from a JSON file, uh, which can be quite, pretty helpful as far as getting things up to speed and uh, checking out your data after the fact. Uh, but if we flip over to the documentation real quick and we go through the Android setup, there's a couple of dependencies. This outlines everything. There's a couple of dependencies we have to add in, really straightforward. Uh, and then we can just start using things. So we can very quickly get a database instance from Firebase. And then what we're going to care about here is the value event listener. And specifically, the object that we need to pass into that function uh, requires us to override two functions here and we really care about the on data change one here. So basically anytime something happens or updates or changes in this database, we are going to be able to see that in real time, hence real time database, inside of our code here. So as we can see here, there is nothing in our database, but we can go ahead and either import a JSON file to load it or we can do something manually. So I'm just going to show you manually how to do things. Um, and we can just do so by clicking this little plus sign here. And it's basically going to open up this UI where we have name and value is basically key and value, kind of like how JSON is structured. Um, and so we can just start to fill it out, right? So if we actually had the name or the key be first name, you know, the value would be something like DOM. And we go ahead and click add. And now we see that basically at this node here, we have a field named first name and the value is DOM. We can go ahead and update this uh, inside of these little uh, quotations and then kind of, I guess you hit enter. Yeah, you hit enter and everything kind of updates. So it is pretty interesting because you can manipulate data very easily here behind the scenes. And when we have this set up inside of our code, we will actually see this on data change get invoked. We will see this new data snapshot object have the new snapshot of whatever the information is here, whatever we are observing essentially in our database. So it's extremely powerful. It is slightly limited in certain ways, but for our sake, it is going to do just fine here. So let's go ahead and jump into some code here uh, following along with this um, tutorial here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this code really quickly, go over to Android Studio. Uh, we'll just paste it in here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and just import what we need here. Uh, and wonderful. So first thing I want to talk about here is this is a very quick way to get a reference to the database that this project is connected to. 
inside of Firebase. And then specifically here, we have database.getReference with a path here, message. So as we can see inside of our database, there is no information here that has a message. There is no node here that has message. Now, if we were to go ahead and add message here, and we were to say hello, uh, let's say hello from Firebase, we can go ahead and add that in. Now we can see that there is a message node here. We're gonna go ahead and just clean that up by deleting it just to make things a little simpler to read. So all we have in here is basically a message, hello from Firebase. We flip back over to our Android Studio, we can see that now this starts to make a little bit more sense. So my reference here is going to be the reference at a particular path. In this case, it's going to be message. If we actually go ahead and take a look at the code here, what this returns, a database reference here. It is a reference to a particular location in our database, uh, and then we can do things with it. So it extends query. It's not really just a, uh, I guess, a plug and play object, but what we can do with that is we can actually go ahead and basically attach some sort of a listener here to our reference to basically provide us the information once it is ready. So if we go ahead and say my reference here dot get, this will give us a task and we can add an on complete listener here. Well, let's go ahead and just add uh, a on success listener here. So we get a data snapshot as we can see here in this little tool tip. And then we can go ahead and just print line it dot, let's go with a value, it dot value. So whatever is at this location here inside of our database, we should print that out. Now we're gonna go ahead and rerun the application. Nothing is going to change here, obviously, because we haven't modified the UI, but if we take a look at our logs here, we can see the system dot out is the hello from Firebase. So this is super powerful because we are more or less communicating with the backend, if you think about it that way, in literally just a few lines of code. So this is amazing as an individual or indie developer uh, to have a tool like Firebase, especially the real-time database, at your disposal. So outside of that, we can go ahead and follow the rest of the documentation here uh, to add a value event listener here to basically go ahead and get updates to this particular node. So if we say my reference dot add value event listener. We're going to go ahead and create an object that extends, what is it? It's the value event listener right here. Probably could have guessed that based on the name of the function. And then we are simply going to implement the two functions that we need to here uh, on data change and on canceled. So let's just go ahead and say nothing to do because we're not going to do anything in the uh, canceled state. But instead, we're going to go ahead and say print line print line, um, well actually let's, let's use the log statement here so that we can go ahead and uh, get a little bit of a header here attached to it. So let's say snapshot and then we're going to say snapshot dot value dot to string here. So nothing else changed here. We're just going to go ahead and rerun this project and we'll take a look at our output. So taking a look at our output here again, nothing has changed. We haven't done anything to this application. Uh, we can see a snapshot right here that says hello from Firebase. Now, let me go ahead and head on over to our database here. And let's say instead of hello from Firebase, we'll say hello from Firebase 2. Hit enter. We can see this little yellow since it's been modified. And when we flip back here to Android Studio, we can see hello from Firebase 2. And if I can... I can manage these windows well enough here. We will say hello from small window. And we can actually see it all in real time update in the logs. So as I mentioned, this is extremely powerful and hopefully you can really see the value as to why. Um, this really does give us insight into why it's called real time database and gives us a whole lot of flexibility as developers to basically just have our UI update uh, literally in real time. So with this in mind, we're going to go ahead and expand this out. We're going to go ahead and follow the best practices there, the MVVM. We're going to go ahead and get everything up and running. We don't necessarily at the moment need to make use of coroutines, but whenever there is the time and place to do so, you know we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to cut it here. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, please give a like if you're interested in the content that is to come. And please do consider subscribing if you've made it this far. Thanks and have a good rest of your day.